You are now tuned in to the Melanated Mental Health Awareness Podcast, powered by Black Window Chaser. This is Season 1, Session 2, entitled The Revolution is Live, Managing the Current Racial Trauma. This session is brought to you by this week's correspondent, Mr. Shara C. Dobb. Grand Rising, beautiful, courageous, and resilient people. Thank you for tuning into the inaugural Melanated Mental Health Awareness Podcast brought to you by Black With No Chaser. My name is Deshara Dobb, and I am your new favorite therapist and social worker. <laughs> but seriously, thank you so much, Black With No Chaser, for extending this opportunity to me. A little bit about me. I am a couple and family therapist, social worker, CEO, and a community change agent that desires to help people live their best lives. I am the founder and chief executive officer of Vision of Promise, LLC, a culturally competent and trauma-informed counseling and consulting service out of Louisville, Kentucky. Yes, I am a Black-owned business. Feel free to follow Vision of Promise, LLC on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And of course, you can also follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. To begin our family meeting, I would like to quote the words of our ancestor, the purple one, Prince Rogers Nelson. We are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. And family, it's time to talk. This broadcast will go live on Wednesday, June the 3rd, 2020. Providing you the date is important because this time in our country will be in the history books. Our children's children and beyond will learn about this time. They will learn about what we did, what we was involved in, and how we changed the world. And I believe that this podcast will be a part of the historical record. So let me go ahead and get started. So first things first. COVID-19, it caused a worldwide shutdown and subsequent quarantine beginning around March the 3rd, 2020. As of May 24th, 2020, the New York Times published a list of 100,000 lives lost during the coronavirus. Unfortunately, the numbers are growing each day, despite that at the time of this broadcast, the government is giving permission for the country to slowly open back up. And family, many of us know that unfortunately, our people are at a disproportionate rate of not only having this virus, but not having access to testing and not receiving adequate treatment. This alone took our country by storm. And then this next pandemic hit all of us in our core and in our deep, deep dark place. And that's the senseless killings of my people, black people, innocent black people from Georgia to Kentucky to Minnesota. And unfortunately, so many states in between, I am at a complete loss for words. And I know many of you are too. So we are oversaturated with the news through social media and conversations with our village, through alerts to our devices. Unless you are trying to avoid it and you are totally tone deaf, you know exactly what's going on. Calls for justice around this country are growing. The voices of tired, devastated people are getting louder. We are seeking answers. And unfortunately, we are being denied the truth. So I wanna take a brief moment to acknowledge all of our brothers and sisters whose lives were taken unjustly. The families, loved ones, and members of their communities who are grieving, I'm thinking of you. And for those who are standing on the front lines in their workplaces, in their homes, finding ways to support this movement, I am sending love and light to each and every one of you. 
thank you for getting up each day and making the world a better place for all of us. So family, I am currently in Louisville, Kentucky. I am surrounded by the current demonstrations. I am in the community building and rebuilding conversations. I've been hearing the sirens constantly being alarmed day in and day out, all day and all night for the last several days. I am in the thick of this. So I wanted to let you know that my tone, my passion, and my commitment is to preserve the integrity and dignity of my loved ones and my community. So I wanted to just provide you a bit of background specifically around Louisville. The demonstrations and calls to action did not just start recently. As far back as 1999 with brother Desmond Rudolph and to our baby sister, Janaya McMillan in 2016 and far beyond that, justice has continued to be delayed and deferred. So to each and every social action and civil rights organization and group displaying excellence and peaceful demonstrations, thank you. And especially to the families of not only Sister Brianna Taylor, but for so many, oh, so many innocent people who have been slain, I dedicate this podcast episode to you. So my intentions for today's podcast is twofold. One, to create safe space for honest conversation and expression, the real and the raw emotions of this time. And two, to provide some practical tips to manage life within this quote unquote new normal. As, black, as a black woman as a, and as a mental health provider, this time in our world is not easy for me. And I know it's not that easy for many of you as well. But I am making it my priority and my mission to do my part by extending my gifts, knowledge, and talents to each of you. So a few days ago, I was practicing some intentional self-care. I silenced my devices and I turned on off, I turned off all forms of social media in an attempt to regroup, to reset, to rest my mind and my spirit. And then something came over me. The words of who I affectionately called Prophet Gil Scott Heron. I'm gonna give you just a few words from this good text entitled, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Listen up, family. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, or cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on SCAG and skip out for beer during, commercial, during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. On search for tomorrow because black people will be in the streets looking for a brighter day. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. The revolution will put you in the driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised. It will not be televised. The revolution will be no reruns, brothers and sisters. The revolution will be live. This masterpiece was recorded on April 19th, 1971. 1971, this song was recorded 49 years ago. And I don't know about y'all, but as liberating and powerful as this piece is, it saddens me that this song is still just as relevant today. This is just one of many Black liberation and freedom anthems. But it reminds me at times that we have come so far and other times, how far we still have to go. So today, I wanted to lift up our brother, Gil Scott Heron, 
and many, many other artists and revolutionaries who found a way to engage in the demonstrations of freedom and equality. And for you listening, I hope you know that each of you have a gift, a resource, knowledge, and even stamina that can contribute to this movement. And if you are unable to get in the streets to raise signs and walk and say aloud, that is okay. You are still important and you're needed. I've had many conversations around people not knowing how to get involved or verbalizing a sense of helplessness on the inability to do what others are doing to visibly demonstrate. But for those who prefer the background, even those who prefer to be anonymous, we need you. The community needs you. The families and loved ones of our fallen brothers and sisters need you. And this is my first mental health tip. Determine how you can turn your pain and frustration into power. If you are a writer, write something. If you are an artist, create. If you have some extra resources, share it. We are in this thing together. We are the village. The next tip I have is to make space for your feelings. We all are feeling a multitude of ways. And we may have been feeling this way for a really long time. But it has been suppressed because of fear or maybe because of hopelessness. But however it's been suppressed, let it out. Freedom starts in your mind. You must set your mind free and your spirit will follow. This can be done through meditation. It can be done through talking to your most trusted confidants and loved ones. It can be done by exercising and getting some of that energy out. Your feelings are important and it's crucial for you to find a way to just get it all out. And my final tip, seek help at the moment that you need it. One thing I know about getting help is that many of us wait until it's at the point of no return to ask for it or to seek it out. Your mental health and wellness is the foundation for your life. And if you don't feel good, if you're unable to process your emotions or unable to navigate life in a well state, brother, sister, please tell somebody. The beautiful thing about platforms such as this is that you are exposed to amazing leaders in the mental health field who can assist you in finding the resources that's right for you. Also, browsing the internet can sometimes be our friend too. So ask around. Word of mouth is a powerful tool. There are many therapists and mental health professionals in the community who are committed to your wellness and wholeness and also understand your culture and are in this thing with you. So right now, Everybody listening, I want you to repeat after me. I will get what I need to be whole and to be my best self. One more time. I will get what I need to be whole and to be my best self. I really hope that you all repeated this with me because I want you to be great. I want you to live to your full potential. It's not too late. It's time to make a commitment to yourself today. So before I close out this inaugural podcast, I just wanted to take a moment to once again thank Black With No Chaser 
for extending this opportunity. This has most certainly been a healing space for me and I'm hopeful that it was for you as well. Again, follow me on social media at D E S H A R A C D O U B on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And also follow my black owned business, Vision of Promise LLC on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to receive free resources through social media. So in closing, I will recite the words of our ancestor, my sister, Fannie Lou Hamer. Nobody's free until everybody's free. Stay beautiful, stay courageous, and stay resilient. Peace, family. not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on stag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercial interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the shape of a war theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. The revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nub. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thinner because the revolution will not be televised, brother. There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mae pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color TV into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on the court from 29 District. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of Whitney Young being run out of Harlem on a rail with a brand new process. There will be no slow motion or still lights of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green liberation jumpsuit that he has been saving for just the proper occasion. Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, and Hooterville Junction will no longer be so damn relevant, and women will not care if Dick finally got down with Jane on Search for Tomorrow, because black people will be in the street looking for a brighter day. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news and no pictures of Harry R. Women Liberationist and Jackie Onassis blowing her nose. The theme song will not be written by Jim Webb or Francis Scott Key, nor sung by Glenn Campbell. Tom Jones, Johnny Cash, Engelbert Humperdinck, or the rare earth, the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. You will not have to worry about a dove in your bedroom, the tiger in your tank, or the giant in your toilet bowl. The revolution will not go better with coat. The revolution will not fight germs that may cause bad breath. The revolution will put you in the driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised. The revolution will be no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live.